Fredlocks this in Jamaica um, with a crate, my sister Zadi too. You know, we're doing a project, Six Be Nourish, and I have a song that I've contributed, produced by Caveman. And I want all the artists that move to my big ugly face endorse the thing because we're doing this for a wonderful cause, Africa. You know, our people, them, as Rasta people, I mean, not, not, not even non Rastas who want to help. But the rest of people living in parts of Africa and the medical thing over there is not too up to date. You know, so I endorse the thing, say, but want to get some funds. Because the sister now, I, I, I send off things from UK. A lot of things she has sent off, you know, to the hospitals, you know. So we want the people them know, say, it's not a scam thing, it's a real thing, and you know, I have proof. And a lot of artists have contributed songs because we want to help this cause. So. You say the artist see me upon this and know me as a singer, Fred Lock, and I endorse this. I put my head upon the block. And I tell you, so you can, end up, you can come do the thing, so just support the thing. Because me and me tell you personally, I say, I know say, this thing is for a righteous cause. See? As it might say, and it's, it's fitting. Let the hungry be fed the naked clothes, the sick nourish, the age protected, and infants cared for. So this is what the daughter said. She had the old thing, but too, she's in the medical field, she take out that part of sick, be nourished, you know? And I can know say, she comes to help our people, young and old, especially our elders who most of them can't afford certain things. And as I said, from the land, you know, a lot of things are there. So anyhow, Fred Locks and that's the thing. Bless the love, Akaros Riley, they seen. Do remember the sick must be nourished, the hungry must be fed, the blind must be led, age protected, infants cared for, and seen. So watch it away in full support of the Sick Be Nourished program and the movement. Rastafari is not just about music, it's about life and liberty and trying to help the world be a better place. So enough respect to the Sick Be Nourished and we will do what we can to do what we can. Bless it. Hi, this is Leroy Gibbon right now endorsing the Sick Be Nourished project. Keep it strong. We need your help. My name is Barry Salmon. And right now I'm saying I want you all to big up. Sick Be Nourished Project. NNC UK. Yeah? It's all for the best cause. We are a group of Rastafari daughters within the community. Um, back in those days, 15 years ago. 15, 20 years ago. And um, within the group, we have several sisters in the community that we joined together and formed ourselves as the youth. Universal Rastafari Improvement Association. Um, within that association, we had different committees, and I am Makida, in particular, was from the Ethiopian committee, so we report pertaining to anything to do with Ethiopia. One of the sisters, one of our nice sisters, decided to go home, lock, stack, and barrel, Sister Yayinka Mawali, and she left um, to go to Ethiopia, Shashamani, with her three children to go home. For good, yeah. Now we have lands in Ethiopia, so Sister Yainka was going to work that land and try and develop, start building something initially. So that's how you know how we be, become located within Shashaman, and that's how the Sick Knowledge Project came came into being. The work that we're doing, um, we need to be able to command funds and so forth and establish ourselves yeah. um, to actually make the work sustainable. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have become a registered charity. It's in the last uh, five, six five years. years. It, it, the Sick Be Nourish actually spring from the NNC, more to say title Sick Be Nourish, from the National Library Council. Because the NI and I is the Sisters Council of the National Library Council. But the works hasn't really changed. Because, like that is to say, you see, Uriah, we started in 1984. And, say, the equipment, say, from 
keeping a track record, we've developed policies and procedures, we've got a volunteer policy in place, health and safety policies in place, and, and what we're trying to do, we've developed a, um, um, an audit tool. Now this audit tool, we send out to different clinics, hospitals, individuals, to assess the need, so that when we are giving equipment to various organizations we don't give them things they don't need mm -hmm. you know, so we target what if for example the clinic or the hospital hasn't got suction on the wall mm -hmm. then why are we sending suction right. tubing okay. we send it to somewhere where it's right. so okay. what we yeah so you identify we're the identifying need the, need the need and where they're yeah. finding where the gaps are coming from the people themselves mm -hmm. and also when we give them the equipment we want to see that these equipment are given and are used for what you said you were going to use them for. So we request that they are transparent with us and that we get outcomes mm -hmm. and we also stipulate that the things are not to be sold for profit or personal gain. Mm -hmm. How we create awareness of the project, we use several methods. We produce newsletters, we do presentations and lectures and workshops. Um, we've actually done um, a variety of health related workshops, blood pressure monitoring and diabetes monitoring as well. We, um, we attend interviews, radio station interviews and so forth and we produce information. We try to be transparent. And use the music as well. Just, you yeah. can, even at the dance, the music, the music is a big catalyst. Because a lot of artists have come on board to make awareness of the project she's already done. You no, know, she's already done one C D. Yes, because local artists. What we've done is um, to ensure that the singers and the players of instruments that they shall, shall be there. Mm -hmm. So because of that, that automatically dictate that as an artist you have that ability to create that awareness world, international wide. You just have to have a word so on. Yeah. So what we have done is um, enlisted the assistance of local, national and international artists. Um, we've got donations of various rhythm tracks from a variety of studios here in the UK, in Jamaica. And, and we then take those tracks and give them to the local the artists who then vocalise onto the track. And then we have those tracks. Okay. Even at a dance. We talk about the project and we fundraise at the same time. We go yes. around with the collection, but like quite Af African centered events, Africa. African liberation. The, uh, Every dance, even the local the dance up at Ruskin Hall. Yeah. We, from them, see, we come at the gate, we're mm -hmm. going in free, and then the man them will stop the music, yeah. give I and I the mic, and we'll talk what we about do is tell them. What your money do last week, you know, yeah. you see the money them want to give you last week. Yeah. Send the things them Ghana, Senegal, this gone to Uganda. Yeah. So it's we keep the people roots. updated. Yeah. And yeah. they love that. And then we say, yeah, we are coming on with the pan again now. Yeah. And that's how we've been. Amazing. We always let everyone know before we leave. Oh, how much? Right. Yeah. Can you tell us more about yourselves individually, your expertise and your training? Because I think it's important that viewers of the documentary can hear the, the skills that you have behind the project? Well, I work as um, I think I it, it, yeah. Yeah. before, but I work as a surgical practitioner. Um, I'm a trained nurse by background, um, a registered general nurse, but then I went on to develop the role of the surgical care practitioner, which is a practitioner in and out of the operating theatre. So I have a degree in um, registered general nursing and I've developed it further as I've said to include basic surgical skills, peg insertions, suturing techniques, I carry out make, um, minor surgery procedures, endoscopic procedures and also assist the surgeons with major surgery. Um, it involves teaching um, junior staff, junior nursing and medical staff. The, the Sigby Nourish project 
staff members are all volunteers and we all come from a variety of backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Makeda is, um, has just completed her PhD and is Dr. Makeda. Tell him a bit more about yes, yourself. Tell us more about that. Oh, well, the <coughs> voice come from my pinky. <laughs> <laughs> the um, research I did actually was about children occupying the streets in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So it's African-centered research. It's not really coming from the eyes of a white man or Indian. It's about I like as Africans solving our own problem. So although it's about children, it's a lot about poverty, eradication and strategies and African governments or the they um targeting poverty eradication and it wasn't very loved by those people but the plan is set in it with which it itself is a development plan for Africa will be taken up. But I've also got nine years mental health. I did substance abuse even in South Africa. Um, manifestos. I got three professional leadership certificates. I'm an A1 assessor. I got outcomes focus certificate. So I've done a variety of work, community development. I've consulted and you know, it's all my work mostly is in the African community. So like you see for organization struggling. I use this basically training and those health and social care is my main tutoring. I go in and um, build the capacity and write up the policies and kind of set the organization straight. I don't really get no great, but it's the works of the father works. So yeah, I've got a lot of different backgrounds actually mm -hmm. of work experience. You know? That is blessed. That is blessed. And I know since you come into the project yeah. more recently, but some yeah. of your background um, so. Well, I came into the project when Sisters Eddie Two went to the function at um, Aston Villa, the Football um, Association, there was a charity there, and I met her there, but prior to that, I met Sister Zaditu and in a dance, and a spirit just, I don't talk it like it is, a spirit just come on me and we just drag her out to the dance, <laughs> and say, I and I got some works to do, you know, sis, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what, you know, I and I got some works to do. And then the next day we met up, it was at the same, <laughs> <laughs> same event. And um, then the next thing I knew she was at Junior's. And then the next thing we knew we went somewhere else. She's got her sick be nourished pack, I've got my mother's oppression pack. So it's like something was bringing us together. Well, what I've been doing within the community, I've been running a, an organisation, started in 2001, called Mothers of Creation, which was to support the sisters in music, because I noticed, as an artist, as a black woman, the brothers weren't giving us any opportunity to come forward and to have the centre stage. So I did an event where we reversed roles, and we made the brethren then put on t-shirts, say Mothers of Creation, <laughs> and supported the sister and did backing for us. And it was on the 2nd of November, His Majesty's Carnation. It was very, very <coughs> emotional for the sisters, and it was just as emotional for the brothers because I think without realizing sometimes we oppress our own, we oppress our own talent. So that was successful and I've been trying to continue to do that but then I diversified from working with women to working with young people. Um, I did a degree in project management and bid writing. I've always been struggling at the lower end um, to get funding because we need strength and we need to strengthen one another and sometimes when you're isolated and you're trying so hard to develop something it's hard as an individual because um, more hands make light work, many hands make light work so being here with Sisters Attitude is an opportunity for us now to grow in strength to support one another in certain areas I can support on the music side, I can also help with the medical side even though I don't know much about the medical side is having that support mechanism to support one another 
it's, it's like a great strength that I and I have within each other. You know, there's other sisters that are not currently here, such as Sister Jem, who has a whole wealth of experience mm -hmm. in strategic management mm -hmm. and planning. Mm -hmm. There is um, Sister Michelle Levi, Sister Taitu, Empress Taitu, who is um, has accounting skills mm -hmm. and very hard working. Mm -hmm down to her, get things done, sistering. There is Sister Chippo that has a whole wealth of community development. She has also done a lot of work in the community with the youth, um, working with the schools. They actually did a, an event with we the did, schools. We did an event which I don't see has been duplicated as yet. That, you know, like, they, are, um, they did a <coughs> university challenge when they, they had all the schools competing. But the questions was all African history. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was featured in the black, it was yes. in the drum, and it was featured in the vice newspaper. And the only, I think, failure, what we wanted to do, we wanted to raise the funds to take the youth with you them to Gambia as part of the prize, but we never get that far. But the whole exercise, it was Sister Chibo plan, was great. Because, we, you know, we, we booked them all, the schools, within the all shouting and screaming for them to you know, we do a lot. And I think as bondage, mm -hmm. a lot of us come from those 1970s times when we actually bond. Mm -hmm. The bond was more the car. The, the tribulation years of what faced I and I in the yes. highway, yeah. it taught us to stick together. And, and we've got common goals that we yes. all aim at. Yeah. We've all got the it's common Africa. goal. So regardless of the stresses that we might have individually, we want to come together yeah. for the works. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. The works is so important it's because we are looking than, for it's bigger than, it's bigger than yeah. Yeah. So that bond helps I and I to cope with the day to day. Yeah. You know, yes. because we have each other. In know, different in different in ways. In different ways supporting each other. Yeah. Yes sir. My motto is success. We now have to come from a position of strength because we can't be weak in this thing anymore. Mm -hmm. And we have to leave that legacy for the youth, them that yeah, then can look as their sisters are too sick, be nourished and her works will be there for them to analyse, to look at, to say, wow, look at what this sister do in the community and yourself. So I think it's important for us as women, not only women, as men, to go out there and lead by example as people, as, as a people. Is that I think very it's that time. Yeah, very important point to raise, you know, that to, to highlight the skills and expertise amongst I and I, because very often we were talking no. earlier about how the system likes to caricature Rastafarians into just some simple thing. But there's a lot of solid things going on, and documentaries like this will help to bring that yeah. out and show the people so the youths them can see that there's an example to follow. Yeah, I think that's part of our journey, because the 70s time, we actually born education. It was a piece of the system that we refused. But when no, we get to Obama's His Majesty's speeches, which we never had at that time, and His Majesty put on education, we know even as you daughters that this is the this is the way. Because His Majesty education is the key. And we look at Africa and what part I and I can play within that role to the development of Africa, the situation. <coughs> so, oh, I so in terms of Ethiopia being, as it's been mentioned, mm -hmm. to follow that spirit through, mm -hmm. explain a bit more specifically about the works mm -hmm. that, that the Sikh Binarish is doing in Ethiopia. Okay, currently we are um, looking at the state of the Shashamani District General Hospital because during the time of Inca, before she passed. Mm -hmm. The state of the hospital at that time was one where she paid to go to Addis instead, but it has been developed dramatically. I went to Shashamani and did a report on the hospital, I actually went into theatre with the surgeons and um, it has improved a lot. They've got um, a storeroom, they've got a lot more equipment, a lot more surgical packs and things like that. So they have, it, you know, they are increasingly developed. They are being supported by the um, 
um, which country is it? In the USA. The Italians wow. who are sponsoring parts of the hospital. So there are actual um, Italian builders on site, um, non-governmental agencies that are building parts of the hospital. So, you know, they're, they're embracing all the help, but the hospital has developed rapidly since that time. Um, we're working with Dr. Jonas, who is based in Shashamani. Dr. Jonas is part of the Elders Medical Project. Now, the Elders Medical Project has been set up by um, the anniversary development of Rastafari, um, Ras Wayne from Baltimore in America, Ruben Kush, and basically we are kept abreast of what's going on with the elders and Shashamani. So, for example, there were 14 elders on the land, you know, before those that have passed away. So, this the Elders Medical Project was responsible to ensure that each elder was looked after. There's various sisters on the land that are trained health professionals and they would be responsible for a certain amount of the elders to make sure them, you know, them have food, them locks wash, them nails cut. And Dr. Jonas was working alongside the Elders Medical Project as the physician. If any of the elders take sick, then he will look after them. So as part of that, Sikh Benourish now has had um, some information from Dr. Jonas, some photographs of the clinic and the lack of resources that he has. So we've identified um, certain things that he needs. We have a box packed ready to go Wrong to him. Back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is directly for um, the Yo Dr. Jonas. Dr. Jonas, in response to receiving this equipment and the support, has identified that he will provide medical assistance and care for Rastafari on the land in Ethiopia, in Shashamani, free of charge, which he, is what he does, you know. We are also working with the fire clinic, which is again on the King's Highway. The fire clinic is an 11 bed unit that is um, catering again for I and I with, on the land. If we take sick, we can go pay 30, 40 burr to be a member and um, he will take care of I and I needs. One of the things that he pointed out to I on the last trial was the high incidence of um, throat cancer amongst I and I on the land and he was asking me for a specific um, uh, endoscope which is what he would use to assess um, our care needs. So we've also got identified Sikh Binarish members in Shashamani, um, Sister John Judah, Ruben Kush, and we are looking to work with the, um, minister, the Federal Ministry of Health to look at setting up the charity arm um, in Ethiopia. I've also looked at um, job opportunities and visited um, various ministries. I've had communication from a nurse that is currently working in the Addis Ababa University who would like um, support possibly coming up, myself going over to work in a teaching capacity. I've also had um, various offers from other hospitals where they would you know, be glad to have someone with my skills working in that capacity. Also um, with the Nyabingi house itself, there is an identified need for equipment. Um, Sister Beverly Ruben is looking after ones, particularly those that pass on the land. So the sister needs support. She's looking after that aspect of life when the flesh pass, and she we've identified the need for support and some of the items within the next um, box to be sent to Ethiopia will be to support that sister. Um, as well as that, there's a Jamaican Rastafari Development School that has been supported by Brother Carl on the land. And again, there is a need for support for a first aid kit to support the school children. I think there's 300 children that attend the school and also the keeper on the school. Well, currently, what, what is actually required now to ship that box that is out there ready to go to yeah. Shashamani, for example, 
we need to come down here we need to identify the items mm -hmm. sometimes we have a request form from the particular mm -hmm. organization or individual we then source that equipment we then have to write out the itinerary mm -hmm. how many bandages how many the exact and then um, we pack them we have um, assistance from one particular shipping company, mm -hmm. JLB Shipping, who have we worked with all, over the last few years. They will help to ship to Jamaica for very little cost. Mm -hmm. However, to ship to Africa, mm -hmm. then we need to um, give them something. Mm -hmm. Now, how we ship things to date, various companies will come here, source the equipment, we will fill out an itinerary, type it up on our official signature documentation, email it to them, and then they will come take the equipment and ship it themselves. In other cases, we fundraise and send the equipment to us. Yeah? We also, before we change, not only send medical equipment and fundraise for that, but we are also fundraising for emergency care, emergency treatment, tests, investigations and procedures. Yeah. So sometimes we might need to fundraise because someone needs an angiogram in Jamaica or this bridge needs a particular test in Ethiopia. Um, the bridge needed a wheelchair in Ethiopia and we did a fundraising and purchased the wheelchair for the bridge. Who would you like to have involved in within the UK and why? Well, one of it's important to have professionals, other healthcare people such as you know, doctors, because of the skill set that they bring and what we hope to do is the youth because the youth is the future and we need to develop you know from the launch of the Universal Sick Nourish Nursing Corps we want to train the youth, the youth 16 to 23 basic nursing skills we want to engage the community to carry out community health related work you know like visiting the sick in hospital and providing food and comfort for, for those that are sick, people that are elderly and don't have anyone else. These are things that we need to look at in our own communities here. So community, other community groups, community members, the youth and also other health professionals. It is important because it is a health related project and a lot of the advice that we, we ask, people ask, you know, Seek, related. seek is related, and you know we, we need other ones with with that particular skill set. It's also important with the equipment in identifying the use of certain equipment. For example, we've got an anaesthetic machine, an anaesthetist, yes. in order to tell us how to use the machine. You know, so I don't know what else. I think it's personally, it's important that Sikbin Nourish gets the partnerships outside of the medical. Um, things that they're doing, partnerships from businesses that can inject money so that we can move forward, partnerships in other organisations that can bring other skills to the table for the growth and the development of sick minority. So anyone with any skills out there is welcome to come and join the project um, because I think it's about growth and development. And those without skills, there's arts trainers. You know, we're looking constantly looking for volunteers. And volunteers. You know, we've got a, a volunteer party True. and we know our volunteers will receive orientation and training. and training. Well, you know, it is written that the singers and the players of instruments they are with here. You know, that is for a very worthy reason. And if you check the artists, the musicians, the drummers, the message that they give out is is you know, it's world and all encompassing. Um creating awareness wherever, whether it be negative or positive, it does create something within one when they hear music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we did was to engage the artists, particularly those within the Rastafari community, so that we can, you know, support and, and bring positive vibration mm -hmm. through the music. And one of the main vibrations that we wanted to create awareness around was the, the creed. You know, the, the Sick Binoche Project, um, charity project is based on, you know, the creed, let the hungry be fed, mm -hmm. the naked be clothed, the sick be nourished, age protected and the infants cared for. And we look at those five particular areas 
is a government that within our healthcare system, you know, if you look at the National Health Service with sick be nourished project and you know let the hung fed, you're looking at agriculture, let the the sick nourish looking at our sickness, whether it be you know medical, holistic, natural remedies, prevention, yeah. Let the um, hunger be fed. Agriculture, as I said, age protected. You know, the elderly and uh, the cared for. You know, we're looking at the, so the youth. Our youth. Our department. It's, 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 it's all the yes. You understand? Yeah. Clothing. Mm. You know, like hungry. Yeah, we, we, the, um, Necessities. They get clothes. Mm. It's about getting our manufacturing. Yes. What we, so if you look at the creed, you know, is our government. So is that I have I deal with really. In terms of the musicians that have you then listed or have backed the project, yeah. who are they? Well we've had a lot of local artists. We get music from the local um, promoters, the local men that be the music and producers. the engineers and producers and they will donate particular tracks to the project. We then give those tracks artists. to local artists national artists and then we take the tracks abroad to Jamaica, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, we even have artists in Ethiopia, we've had artists in Zimbabwe, anywhere we go. And then we vice versa now tracks have been coming in from Jamaica, there's more the word gets out when certain artists mm -hmm. get affiliated yes. with the Sigby Norwich than other producers from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. The Marley's example have been um, donating tracks mm -hmm. for the cause. Mm -hmm. what, what we did was take a track to Caveman Studio, for example, and Caveman has a variety of artists mm -hmm. who will voice on that particular track, and then Caveman donates a track to the project, and likewise. Mm -hmm. um, we have Sisla Kalanjis who has donated a huge selection of music to the project. And when I visited Zimbabwe and went to the House of Stone studio in mm -hmm. Zimbabwe, Unbeknown to I at that time, a sizzler them studio I'm in. So whilst I was there, um, the brethren them made recommendation to sizzler and I filmed it and went to Jamaica. I think it was two weeks later and give sizzler footage of him in in, in, in studio in Zim. So you know the sizzler is very supportive of the project. I know there might be negatives around the brother, but he does work very hard, extremely hard, and is in full support of the project. We have other artists like Ken Booth, mm -hmm. elder veteran in the community and he is in full support of the project. He loves the idea of being able to look at our own sustainability mm -hmm. within health. He's even suggested for um, the Bingy House in Jamaica who we've donated items to recently um, that the brother them use the big 20 foot container cut out a window make, and make a door and use it as a, a health clinic yeah. so that the equipment that was donated can be utilized by health professionals for the benefit of the whole house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, other artists um, in, locally include Maccabee, mm -hmm. um, Vivian Jones, Claire Angel, um, other artists like Tennis Star. Um, we also bring yes. artists um, that are unknown to record on the same rhythm tracks as very well-known artists that we're bringing them up promotion. You know, promotion. We also have um, huge support from Ras Negos whose father in Jamaica is Harry Joseph Juice, you know, so... Mm -hmm. I think um, Roy Marley has been giving advice. Really yes, so um, I was in Jamaica when during Bob Marley urged them and they kept um, a celebration up at um, this warm address and um, Rowan Marley and Junior Reed very interested in the project and would like to offer support and uh, advised how Sick Be Nourish needs to put itself together. Yeah, yeah the Sick Be Nourish infant care for age protected you know Holy man, we like last year, Ja Rastafari. Just big up the sick be nourished, you understand me? Because the sick have to nourish, you understand me? And if the sick be nourished, we don't have no strength, or June and reach us up. That's our purpose in life. Holy man, we like last year, Ja 
Yes, to the Sick Benourish Project, continue to strive to excellence and develop what is it that you have started so we can all work together. Yeah, around my assessment. They recognize that the project can command thousands of pounds, we just have to get that structure right. Following from the visit to Zimbabwe, we have brethren like Jabulani, who has a radio station, SFM, um, which he has a couple of sessions um, in the week. We have actually been interviewed on that. And then we've had other artists come in, like Man Soldier, who's donated a track instantaneously to Sick Benoist Project. So the more positive energy these DJs mm -hmm. and those in That's control it. throw out, the more strength and the more power they give into I and I as a nation because some of our youths are lost, some of the adults are lost <coughs> and where is he back to where you came in when you said what about Rastafari when we were younger in the 70s? It was the music that led us. Words it was the music so that inspired us. It was the music that taught us. <laughs> so in this time, if we can apply the positivity through that works of the music, singers and players of instruments, then we know the responsibility in this time to spread peace, love, and unity on this this planet with the So that's what I have to say about this. And and that's why with Sick Nourish project, you know, each artist that contributes a track to the project is told that the theme is let the hungry be fed and they get clothed. The sick be nourished, the age protected and the infants cared for. We don't want a gun tune, mm -hmm. we don't want a girl tune, mm -hmm. we want it within this Positivity. vein. So whether you are seeing them words there or pertaining to that vein, that is what each artist is told and then they produce the track within that theme. I'm Presadito. I'm Siganalo. Them I'm listening to those who even consider the poor, you know. Yeah, man, see me now, shit, but I'm getting scared for you know. Yeah, man, let this be a part of the good will, you know. Loving your heart, that's nigga side. Give something today, no matter how small. Contribute to the rise and not the downfall. Charity begins at oh, 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 oh. Still I see I set the example from the throne. Give something today. Charity. 
Soul, glory unto power, glory unto his imperial majesty and prohelii. His foundations are in the whole of mountains. Highly I still have the of the gates of Zion Bull and all the dwelling places of Jacob. For glorious things are spoken of the old city of the Most High, Sila. I shall make mention of Rehab and dirty Babylon to them that know I. Behold, Philistia tied with Ethiopia. This man was born there. And of Zion it shall be said, this and that man was born in her. As well as the singers and the players of instruments shall be there. All I had spring shall be in thee. Through the power of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The mighty conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. His imperial majesty, Emperor Heli. Heli. This morning, I've got desire. I 